Hi everyone, um, my name is Sydney. Um, for my design challenge, I have decided uh, to do an introduction to Pythagorean theorem, um, since I will be teaching eighth grade math, uh, which is what this lesson plan um, is created for. Um, so the content learning goal for my students in this lesson um, would to have them learn that the area of the square built upon the hypotenuse and other sides of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares upon the remaining uh, sides. So basically what this means is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, the technology learning goal for students in this um, would is basically just to have Tinkercad be used as um, an effective visual representation of the Pythagorean theorem, um, which will allow them not only to just memorize the formula, but to really understand it and grasp the concept of how right triangles are related to squares and why this um, equation works out the way that it does. Um, so for this lesson plan, I have uh, created um, the introduction kind of just to start off broad, ask them, uh, does anyone even know what the Pythagorean theorem is? Have you ever used it before? Do you know where it came from? Uh, who came up with it? Um, and within those 15 to 20 minutes, I also wanted to have them um, take a ruler um, as well as some paper, preferably grid paper, um, and to draw out a right triangle um, and then measure the uh, length of each side. Uh, once they have written down those measurements, they would then create squares on each side that have the same corresponding measurement. So as we can see in the example I've drawn here, um, for the A side, we have uh, 24 millimeters. For the B side, we have 18 millimeters. And then for the C, we have 30 millimeters. Um, so for this right here, this uh, A square, each of these sides are 24, each of the B is 18, and each of the C is 30. Uh, the reason why we get this is because 24 squared plus 18 squared ends up equaling 900, which is 30 squared. So of course the students would have different measurements depending on uh, the size of the triangle, the right triangle that they draw. Um, but the core of this assignment will actually be um, ha having the students take their rough draft drawings and actually create them in Tinkercad with the same measurements. Um, then I'm totally open to having them walk around and help their classmates out um, to figure out and get familiar with this new program. Um, I as well plan to walk around the room um, and assist them and be there. The one thing I do um, when I propose to them as a question is um, to ask them if their squares match the side length of the triangle, which is important because essentially that is what's going to um, give them the correct answer to their formula. Um, and then hopefully um, I would be in the position to have a 3D printer um, and the students would actually be able to print their uh, 3D Tinkercad uh, creations. Um, in conclusion, for the last 15 to 25 minutes, um, I planned to, um, once they had them printed, they would then find the sum of the areas of the smaller squares and then compare it to the larger square on the hypotenuse side of the right triangle. Um, and then, you know, essentially then just ask them, what do you notice? Do you notice that they end up equaling each other? Um, how does that relate? Um, how, what does that tell us about how we can relate squares to right triangles? Um, and what's that tell us about the Pythagorean theorem itself? Um, and so here are the links to my um, Tinkercad design if we go over here. So here is my design. I can show from the different angles. Um, so right now I've already created the first two squares. As you can see right here, we can see that this one is the side that's 24. Uh, this is the length of the triangle. Uh, this square is a side that is 18. And then for this side, what we would essentially need to do, what the kids would find, um, is that there would be a side that they would have to mess around with to adjust um, the length of this square um, and how, what would make it work 
um, to fit this side, the hypotenuse of this triangle. I'm going to go ahead and change this color. Um, let's do purple. So when we flip back up to the front, what we see is what they would discover is that each of these sides would need to be thir uh, 30 by 30 is what we are going for. So now once we have that, we can actually flip this around. Well, I don't know if it's going to let me. There we go. Make sure that this is 30 by 30. And then what they're going to do is they're going to have to, you know, play around with it to measure right up to the triangle. And you can see is when you get closer, it's actually going to end up being just about perfect um, to the one edge of this triangle, as we can see right there. So it does end up being almost a perfect fit. Um, and this is something that they would realize, of course, um, and indeed, as we saw, the lengths of this were 30 by 30. When it's rotated this way, it doesn't say those numbers, of course. Um, but yeah, so that's, I think that this is the best way for them to really understand the concept of the Pythagorean theorem. Um, I feel like it's a great outlet for students um, to learn it rather than just having a lecture structure um, where I would just be telling them how it is. It's a great way for them to discover it um, on their own. And that is all I have for my design challenge.